let us say peak detector peak detector let us say what is this peak detector and how it is working and what 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 it is going to detect peak detector is nothing else but this circuit will be detecting the what is going to be the uh, highest value of your uh, highest value of your what to say uh, voltage input voltage to what what could be the peak uh, peak value maximum peak value that is a, that is called as a uh, peak detector and the peak detector so now let us enter into this circuit here see now up to now we have seen there are different kinds of uh, non sinusoidal uh, waveforms like uh, uh, square waves triangular waves uh, sawtooth waves and again uh, pulse waves these are these are called as a non sinusoidal waveforms square wave triangular wave sawtooth wave and pulse waves are the non sinusoidal waveforms and here uh, why do we need to use the peak detector why because we are we are, ultimately we have one kind of circuit or one kind of uh, device which can detect the peak that is that device is called as an uh, ac voltmeter in the ac voltmeter what you will what you will be finding out you will be finding out what could be the maximum uh, ac voltage and what could be the minimum ac voltage so even after having that uh, ac voltmeter why are we going for this peak detector is the first question what is the main use of the peak detector the we we have a ac voltmeter which is used for detecting the peak voltages but why we are going for this uh, peak detector means all this ac voltmeters are been designed and manufactured by keeping the sinusoidal ac input signal uh, in uh, view they'll be keeping that sinusoidal ac signal in the point of mind and they have designed that ac uh, Uh, voltmeters means what your ac voltmeters will be detecting only the sinusoidal uh, waveforms uh, peak values it it cannot detect the what is the peak voltage of your non sinusoidal waveforms just like square waveform triangular waveform sawtooth waveform or else pulse wave, waveforms so in order to overcome or in order to have a different kind of circuit which can detect what is the highest uh, value of voltage for non sinusoidal waveforms we have gone for this uh, peak detector what actually happens in the ac voltmeter the ac voltmeter is designed for what it is designed to measure the rms value of the pure sine wave it will be measuring only the rms value of the pure sine wave it cannot measure the values of this uh, 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 non sinusoidal waveforms just like your square wave triangular wave sawtooth wave or uh, pulse waves so that's why we have gone for this one so therefore there is one possible uh, solution in order to uh, detect the peak values of this non sinusoidal non sinusoidal waveforms that is called as the uh, peak detector so peak detector is mainly used for what detecting the peak uh, values of the non sinusoidal non sinusoidal waveforms so now this circuit this circuit is used for measuring the positive peak values of a square waveform here in this one i have taken a square waveform as an input for for this one it has to measure the circuit has to measure the positive peaks it will be measuring the, the positive peaks of this particular square waveforms so now let us see what happens here during the first half cycle during the first half cycle or else i can call it as during the positive half cycle of the input signal you can see here in the circuits in the circuit you can see there are different kinds of components what are the components you are this resistor r is connected what it is connected as a feedback with the output and again there is an resistor r which is connected with the input uh, input uh, voltage source and there are two diodes two diodes uh, d and uh, uh, d1 and d2 and we are supposed to make this diodes on let us see how those diodes are been on and how to find out the peak uh, values that peak value can be found out with the help of this capacitor so let us see how those those can be done now here in this particular uh, lecture during the positive half cycle of the input signal what happens during the positive half cycle of the input signal let us see whenever we supply the positive half cycle of the input signal that's a square wave the output of the uh, op amp will drive the uh, this one so if you are giving a positive half cycle what happens your output you are going to get some positive value over here that's a positive then positive and positive uh, will, will be coming to this one then what happens to this diode the diode d1 is turned on the diode will enter into the forward bias whenever the diode d1 is uh, turned on then the current across this one let it be ic and this diode whenever this diode is turned on it is just like a uh, what to say pipeline path has been created for the flow of current 
it is a if it is turned on means what it is a completely on state the pipeline has been created between the output of the op amp and this uh, capacitor that current which is passing through this diode is ic and that current will be stored in the capacitor in terms of charge that current will be stored in the capacitor in terms of charge but when does that capacitor is going to charge is most important when is the capacitor is going to charge is most important so see here now whenever the input signal whenever the input signal reaches to the peakest value of the voltage whenever the input signal reaches to the maximum value of the voltage at that particular instant of the high peakest value at the highest peak value the capacitor has to charge immediately the capacitor has to charge immediately whenever the input signal reaches to the peak value it goes to the peak value highest value whenever it goes to the peak value and again it it's like see you know we are supplying some square wave the square wave is a continuous signal which will be always switching from the high from this uh, high value to low value high value to low value so whenever it is going from low value let me assume it is going now from low value to high value whenever the input signal reaches to the highest value it it will be staying for a very small amount of time the the switching period between the high and uh, low value will be very fast so that the cap, the signal will be uh, in the highest peak value for a very small amount of time within that small amount of time my my capacitor has to charge up so means what whenever that uh, peak value has been obtained my capacitor has to charge then only i can say whenever my capacitor is fully charged i can say that i have obtained the peak value that is the detection of the peak value of the input signal whenever the capacitor is fully charged when when does the capacitor fully charges whenever my input signal reaches to the peak value if the input signal is reached to the peak value my capacitor is going to be fully charged so that happens whenever the d whenever the d1 is turned on thus i can say since my d1 uh, d1 is in the forward bias the op now whenever the d1 is in the forward bias what is ac actually happening see now whenever the d1 is in the forward bias what is happening your circuit is now working as just like your voltage follower your circuit is working as a voltage follower voltage follower is what you are supplying some positive uh, uh, voltage here that positive voltage has come here that because of that positive voltage only that uh, diode is turned on so positive and positive will turn on the diode that means diode is in the forward bias so this is how the charging uh, takes place in the capacitor now let us see what happens at the negative cycle let us see Uh, at the on the other on the other hand means whenever the input signal is in the negative cycle whenever the input signal is negative cycle what happens now the D, d1 is turned off now the d1 is turned off and because the d1 is turned off the voltage across the capacitor might get discharged there is a possibility of discharging of the capacitor why because i have told in many lectures regarding how the capacitor is discharged take an example of your mobile phone if you are taking an example of your mobile phone you cannot if you are uh, if you are completely charged your mobile phone battery even if you don't use the mobile phone the charge in the mobile phone battery is going to uh, come down means what the charging is discharging the charge which is stored in the battery is discharging in the same way whenever this d1 in the second whenever in the, whenever, whenever you supply the negative cycle your d1 is turned off turned off means what there is no connection between this point output of the uh, op amp and capacitor if there is no connection it is direct connection with this uh, in negative terminal so if there is no connection between the output and this one there is no inflow of the current into the capacitor as a charge then the capacitor will be idle when all the capacitor is idle there is a possibility of slowly discharging of this uh, current across this load slowly discharging of this current across this load so again what happens because of that one because of that one i'll be having I, i'll be not detecting what is the peakest value then again for the next instance whenever the next instance uh, let me assume that there is one uh, pico farad has been uh, uh, stored in the first instance and uh, assume that small amount of the pico farad means what 0.1 pico farad has been discharged now what is the value of this uh, capacitor it is 0.9 pico farad is in the capacitor so now whenever again the input signal becomes uh, in the positive cycle whenever the input signal becomes positive cycle the diode is to turn on and if it is goes to the peakest value then again that 0.1 charge also will be used to charge up this capacitor again so this is how the charging and discharging of the capacitor takes place 
so the only discharge path for this capacitor what is the discharge path is for this capacitor the discharging of capacitor takes place in the negative cycle of this uh, uh, input signal because d1 is a reverse bias and the discharging takes place through the rl discharging takes place through the rl now let us see what could be the charging time what is the charging time and what is the discharging time we'll see here now the charging time the charging time should be calculated such a way that i have told that the switching of the uh, square wave will be very fast means your input signal is going to stay at the peak value for only small amount of time for the small within that small amount of time your capacitor has to be fully charged means what the time period whatever is the time period for switching the time period within the smallest amount of the time period the capacitor has to charge that means your the this value the charging time should be the charging time is given by c into rd that should be very less less than or equal to the time period of that input signal that is it should be 10 one tenth of the time period the charging time should be very small one tenth of the time period should be there in order to charge this capacitor now let us see what will be the discharging time so discharging time should be very large why the discharging time should be very large if the discharging time is very less than the time period the capacitor will be easily discharged the capacitor will be easily discharged so to overcome that one they'll design the circuit such a way that the discharging time will be very large than the uh, this time period so that's why we have given here the discharging time that c into rl what is the discharging time here the discharging time is c into rl c into rl now one more thing what what is this one here i have written it as c into rl for the discharging time here i have written c into rd what is this rd rd is the resistance of the diode why because diode diode is passing some current but is passing some current means what it is having if any uh, conducting path is passing current means what it will be having its own resistance that resistance i am talking here the resistance rd is the internal resistance of the diode so c into rd is my charging time that resistance also will try to uh, uh, will try to uh, oppose the flow of charge so that's why the c into rd is a charging time that should be very less compared to uh, the time period that's why i have taken it should be 1 10th of the time period now coming to the discharging time the discharging time should be what is where does the discharge takes place the capacitor the charge stored in the capacitor discharges only across this rl load only so that's why the discharging time is given as the product of c into rl the product of c into rl that should be very greater than 10 times of this time period means it should be very large the discharging time should be very large so that the capacitor will not discharge very easily the capacitor will not very uh, easily discharge so therefore we have uh, calculated this value uh, this value in this way we can calculate what is the charging time and what is the discharging time uh, i hope you have understood this one is it clear yes sir is it clear ma what is speed detector what is speed detector speed detector is here uh, used for what uh, for calculation of the highest value of the peaks and one more thing what, what is this one uh, you can see here again one more thing you can see another d2 diode is also used here the d2 diode also conducts where, where does the d2 diode conducts the d2 diode conducts in the negative cycle in the positive cycle d1 is conducting in the negative negative cycle what is happening the d2 diode is conducting why the d2 diode is conducting here because you are going to get the negative one here negative is connected to the positive term here so it becomes what so uh, so here you are going to get this one so this will be a reverse biased it is it will be a uh, uh, sorry excuse me in the for in the positive cycle in the positive cycle d1 will be in the forward bias and d2 will be in the reverse bias in the negative cycle d2 will be in the forward bias and d1 will be in the reverse bias whenever the discharging takes place whenever the discharging takes place the d2 is conducting so d2 will be conducting in the in the discharging time and d1 is conducting whenever the uh, what to say charging of this capacitor takes place so this is regarding uh, peak detector 